A new poll says that 7 out of 10 Asian Americans believe the United States is headed in the wrong direction. Let's talk about if that's high or low and also why. We moved here because America was the greatest video game map I ever seen in my whole life. But then lately, there seem like there's so much bugs in the program and nobody is there to do the firmware update. They don't want to do the firmware update. What's going on? Um, Andrew, some troubling studies just came out. Seven out of 10 APIs believe the US is headed in the wrong direction and only one out of 10 believe that democracy is working extremely or very well according to a new poll from AAPI data. Mm. What are we talking about right now, man? We're talking about something very big picture, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think uh, what we want to delve into, first of all, because a lot of Americans feel like America is in the wrong direction. And a lot of Americans are losing trust in democracy of what we know as democracy and also losing trust in like uh, news and information and misinformation. Just but, all systems, man. But, all but we got to talk about the Asians, right? Because the Asians, maybe their reasoning is different or, or, you know, Asians oftentimes as a group in generalities have different values or have a certain set of values. So I guess we're going to talk about that. So yeah, please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys. But one thing that everybody can agree on that is headed in the right direction is Smala Sauce, our very own chili oil. Um, Andrew, of all groups in America, Asians have the lowest voting rate. Mm -hmm. um, I think that generally, I'm not saying there aren't some legacy people in there, but I feel like they're less likely to be tied to something their grandfather or their great grandfather taught them, right? Because uh, typically religions, political affiliations, they are handed down through just like what your family programs you to like. Okay. So Asians tend to be very moderate, right? Like that. Um, moderate, not moderate, not moderate, right? I'm just saying like moderate people. Right. Anyway, let's just get into what the article says. Somebody says, of AAPIs, half say they disapprove of President Joe Biden. So literally, you got the half, half, 50-50 split there. What's surprising about that, Andrew? More lean toward the Democratic Party than the Republicans. However, it shows that Asian Americans are more likely to trust Democrats over Republicans to handle issues such as the spread of information, um, election administration, student debt, and climate change, but more likely to trust Republicans on handling the economy and split on which one is better suited to handle immigration. Yo, that is so interesting. They trust Republicans more when it comes to the economy, and they're 50-50 on how they handle immigration, but they want Democrats to handle student debt, climate change, and election administration. So basically, they're just picking, like, the pros and cons of, like, comparing two players, right? right they're like, right, oh, yeah, right. Jordan or LeBron, well, LeBron's better at passing, but Jordan more well, clutch. I, let me tell you this. Asian Americans generally really hate crime, so if you're being indicted or being convicted or charged for some type of crime like election fraud, Asians really don't like that. And right. they don't like criminals. That's one thing Asians really don't like. Oh they my They really gosh. don't like people who go to jail, man. Right, right. And Asians actually have uh, unbelievably low crime statistics in yeah. America in terms of violent crime. Um, but yeah, I do think that they agree with the general electorate, Andrew, that right now America is faced with a uniquely horrible choice. Wow. This is, this is actually the title of a really viral article, and this is a national poll. Yeah, I mean, uh, basically, if, if it comes up to be Biden and Trump again, rematch in 2024, a lot of people are going to just be out they're just like yo I, i'm i don't even want to think about this election i don't care nobody's happy right suck. the yeah. majority of people are not happy yeah i uh, mean for me i would say when asians kind of feel like that america's set in the wrong direction i think what it is is i don't think it's necessarily fully democratic values or republican values because i don't think a lot of asians actually strongly identify with those two labels i just think asians most asians have a set of values that they care about, the top three, four things that they care about, and they feel kind of moderate about that. So like, you know, a lot of people would say like, generally a lot of Asians have like conservative, like moral values, but they also do not feel super emotional about them either. Right. You know what I mean? Like, it they're just like, yeah, like that, of like, okay, this identity, politics, cool, whatever, but just give me safety well, in the economy. It kind of goes to like Ronnie Chang's first special where he's like, Asians just want things to work. Yeah. They don't care about all this other stuff that it seems like other people yeah. care about. It's not that they don't care in the sense that they hate any of it. I literally think Asians are like, okay, this is not my priority, so whatever works, but my priority is safety, education, and economy. 
Give me that, and then everything else is like, I just don't feel strongly about. Right, right, right. Uh, the article goes on to say Cassie Villison, I believe a Filipino, she says she believes the country has gotten worse in recent years, but it doesn't necessarily mean it was all Joe Biden's fault. I think that it was already going downhill prior to his election. Yeah, I so think it's that's true. Like, yeah, like agreeing that things yeah. are going downhill, but the blame game pie distribution right, is different. Right, right. And I think a lot of people want to blame each president. Let's be honest, every president is only in there for four years. So really, I mean... Four years is like, they're really only being a president for three years. So really they have three years to make an impact. So it couldn't possibly be all of Joe Biden's fault. Right. Even if you go two terms, you're like only and, affected for like six or five And Joe years. Biden is just one man that stepped in there. There was a whole system at work that was already going. So it is true that whatever the upcoming president will adopt and inherit also is a big deal. Whether that's Trump inherited stuff or Biden inherited stuff. It's really not just the president, let's be honest. So the article also goes on to say, Andrew, that uh, whether an Asian is like maybe more Democrat or Republican, they're still able to point out the problems with their own party. Right. So, so even when they are, they're like not the most fervent extremists. Right. Like we said, whether they're left or right, they tend to be moderate left or moderate right, where they're still able to self-reflect and be like, yeah, my, uh, my party's messing up too. Right, right, Because right. this guy was a Republican, but Cho still said that misinformation is a major problem for both parties. Right, right, right. So it kind of goes to show you, I mean, Andrew, what are your quick thoughts on this article? I mean, I just feel like any, obviously nobody's happy, right? That's a national poll. That's an internal AAPI granular, yeah. like uh, statistical thing. I just feel like right now, in my opinion, there's a lot of uncalibrated pendulum swinging. For, for example, from police over profiling to zero policing, what a what a horrible pendulum swing. Because that's over here, bad. Swings over here, also bad, right? Yeah, that was a swing. So I just feel like a lot of people are questioning the internal watch mechanisms and sort of like the way things are supposed to read and react yeah. to things. You know what I mean? Um, but I mean, I guess to your point, Andrew, but do just a lot of countries have problems? or, or I, I think, it? I mean, I think every country has problems and I think everybody's problems are kind of like, put out there on the internet, on the worldwide news. You're saying more than ever. Yeah, I mean, more than the, ever. More than ever, a citizen in America is aware of all the problems going across, going on around the world. And we're getting our own information and our own perspective, whether it's whether it's even true or not, or sort of true, half true. Exaggerated, nobody downplayed, even, dismissed. Honestly, no. nobody knows. You don't know. You don't get the right information. To be honest, I, I, I hardly get the right information. Like, who knows? And this is... There's a stat that says 83% of Asian Americans believe that misinformation is a huge problem. 75% of the general Americans believe misinformation is a huge problem. So Asians kind of believe it just a little bit more. I think that Asians are, uh, we know what it's like to be outsided, but also feel culturally a little bit outside of the mainstream in America. Whereas other groups, they may feel more bought into, entrenched in a different sides, you know, whether yeah. it's historically or, or whatever, just emotionally. I think Asians are more... It plays into a stereotype, but I'm saying Asians are less emotional when it comes to political issues, for exactly, sure. Exactly. Um, it just feels like whoever's driving America, Andrew, if America is a Gran Turismo F1 Forza Motorsport cruise in USA, to put it plainly like car, Andrew, doesn't it feel like everybody who was driving it when all the Asians were like trying to come in, I know that a lot of Asians are still trying to come, they were just driving it so good. There were still some hiccups. They were hitting the wall occasionally a little bit, but like they were generally driving it good. And now people feel like, whoever's driving America, whatever forces are driving the car of America, it's just hitting the wall a lot more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, and also, like you said, social media really amplifies the worst parts of society. Look under this chart, Andrew. Here are the actual causes of death in America. It goes heart disease, cancer, everything else, less than 40%. Look at the news. The news reports everything else at like a 75% tier and heart disease is reported on 2% of the time. Heart disease, which is mostly caused by like sugar and like refined carbohydrates and, and like bad diets and stuff. Yeah. It causes 30% and it only receives 2% of the coverage. Yeah. Is it possibly because people advertising certain products, Andrew, during the news might be selling sugary products or carb refined carbohydrates? Wow, that's crazy that homicide actually is really low, but the news Homicide makes the news, always. Yeah, so there's actually a devil's advocate, Andrew, I'm gonna play that here, where people say, actually, all the macro stats are saying right now is better than ever, but the news is worse than ever. Because theoretically, medical tech, and there's less war, even though wars are starting to flare up for the longest time, like there was like a 20, 30 year peace. Because obviously, once we go back to World War II, that was in shambles, shambles, the whole world. 
So anyway, guys, let's just get into the comment section. Somebody said, people are just fed up with a two-party system, man. We're in trouble no matter who wins this year. Nobody cares. Both sides don't care. They, everybody's just trying to get rich or they get co-opted. Maybe they go in with good intentions and they become co-opted by the system. People, like, belief in corruption is at an all-time high. Right, right, right. Um, Republicans will always put out profit and their own selfish agendas over the people. That is one thing that is always guaranteed. Mm -hmm. And I would say that, you know, um, Republicans being so pro-commerce that they're like greedy for their own uh, coffers, that stereotype has been around for a hundred years, Andrew. Mm. I had to look it up. You know what's a democratic stereotype that's been around for over a hundred years? Huh. That they're disorganized. Yeah. Will Rogers, Andrew, said in the 1920s, I am not the member of any organized political party. I am a Democrat. Wow. So, Andrew, these stereotypes, that people, they've been holding true for a hundred years. You know, you know, when stereotypes last a long time, and this goes for any stereotype out there that has kind of stood the test of time, you got to ask yourself why. Like, why do I, why am I stereotypical? Or why does that stereotype still exist? Yeah. Are people just wrong and people have it in their hearts and they want these harmful stereotypes to be true? Or is there some reason for that? Right. Um, I always felt like a two-party system sucked. And you know what is weird about a two-party system, Andrew? Is it just boils down to which side you were born onto, right? Like, if the two parties have different ideologies, maybe your family is more, uh, pocketbook is more impacted by this ideology, your pocketbook, or your emotional pocketbook nowadays is more impacted by one ideology or another. And then you just have to pick it. Um, somebody said, uh, if you haven't figured out Democrats' agenda is to destroy the working middle class, turning them into the working poor, while all the wealthy elites live in a different America. Interestingly enough, Andrew, both sides say this about the other side that they're trying to destroy the middle class. Right. So, oh. so who's right or wrong? And both sides are saying the other side's policy destroys the middle class. Right. Democrats are saying Republicans are destroying the middle class. Republicans are saying that Democrats are destroying the middle class. Maybe both sides are. Yeah. In their own different way, huh? Andrew, the only side guy that I saw question the corporatocracy, in corporatocracy, I'll just pop up that definition right here, Andrew, was Bernie Sanders. Like Bernie sure. Sanders was a true, I guess what, more like socialist, right? Uh, had socialist ideas, I guess. Yeah, I mean, that's what. And then I guess it, on the right, Vivek Ramaswamy says that he is more of like questioning the whole entire system, but like he's from big pharma or was was yeah, a man, pharmaceutical shit. company himself. But he is very smart too. I'm not saying I agree with him. Um, yeah. Ultimately, Andrew, what about the citizens? Do the citizens have to take some blame right now for basically like why everybody is unhappy with the direction? Because obviously, if citizens comprise a democracy, and there's this old adage. The citizens get the democracy that they deserve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I think people are not doing enough. I think people people got caught up in, in a way, like, they got so selfish with, like, social media and just, like, Maybe I don't know what type you mean, of mean enjoying their own there. dopamine, enjoying yeah, their own that that they, they got out of mm -hmm. local politics. Trust me, you know, guys, local politics trickles up because you gotta elect more local state officials. Those people end up becoming U.S. senators. U.S. senators have a lot to do with what happens in America. You mean saying that's that trickle up system? Yeah, like it does matter. Like if we don't vote for who we want locally, then. Almost our, I feel like our leadership up at the top is never going to like represent us. Yeah. Ultimately, Andrew, we could get into this for hours. Like I said, some of these articles on the national polls, I was looking at 10,000, 12,000 internet comments on the Asian polls. There's still comments. I mean, less though, because obviously Asians are less political. Do you, do you think Asians are more like detached from it? Because we're still more considered outsiders and maybe to the political systems of America, we are still more outsiders. Where like a lot of Asians are just like, man... I don't got my emotions put into this, but I just see what I see. Yeah, I do think that Asians are a little bit like, um, I don't know how to say it, like so pragmatic, like a Lee. I'm not saying all, but like my, and we know a lot of people in our family, they really like Lee Kuan Yew a lot, right? Like you, Lee, you want to talk about a hardcore pragmatist that's not really like, you couldn't really place him on a political spectrum you know what I mean? Like in a Western American sense, at least. Like I think you would have to like make the. You mean an you'd have to make it more of a heptagon and then chart each like geographic like shape on there. An ambivalent dictator and ruthless when he needed to be. All right. Well, guys. that's like being an Asian parent, to be honest. Yeah. Anyway, guys, I let us maybe Asian voters just want like a good Asian parent as the president. But then the kids would have to listen. He, you know, I can be the parent. 
But I raised you since you are zero years old. I know you're going to listen, but the, the American people, that's, that's a rowdy kid. Even if you know I'm the, the father uh, now, who will listen uh, to me? Yeah, the kids are losing trust in the parents. And the parents aren't any good. So anyways, you guys, let us know in the comments down below. What do you think about all this? Seven out of 10 Asian Americans feel like the country is headed in the wrong direction. Should that number be higher? Should Asians know better? Or, or are Asians overrating how bad the country is? Let me know in the comments down below. I think a lot of valid arguments on all sides. Let us know. We encourage the debate. Until next time, we're going to hop out, boys. We out. Peace. Peace.